Well, welcome everybody. Um, it is two o'clock and we are delighted to have our, an opportunity to talk to some of our mission partners today. And what I would like to do is just introduce uh, who is on the line and we will get started. So um, let's do this from the furthest away. How about that? Um, it's my pleasure to, <clears throat> to introduce Kasha Burke. Kasha is with Children of the Nations and she is Children of the Nations um, Haiti representative. And we have been involved, Fletcher Hills Presbyterian Church has been involved with Children of the Nations for a few years now. And she has been our eyes and ears working with the local folks in Haiti in a town called Bellevue, which is outside of Port-au-Prince, um, a bit more rural than our Haiti experience had been before. And uh, Kasha is here uh, to update us on what's going on in Haiti and to kind of talk about sort of how things are going. So Kasha, welcome, and we're glad to have you. Thanks so much. And it's actually Cassia. Cassia, okay. Yeah, and well, you wouldn't know that since we've only emailed before, but. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, it's glad to have you. <laughs> um, and then we'll just go to our nearest partner next. Robin Watson is here representing the Fletcher Hills Presbyterian Preschool. Uh, Robin uh, has a number of students that uh, come each day. And uh, we see the students out on the patio and we get to work with Robin on a daily basis almost. Um, so, Robin, we are delighted to have you here. Um, Robin, how long have you been at the preschool now? 12 years. This is my 13th school year. 12 years. Ooh, some of those first students will be driving this year. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> Oh, anyway, well, Robin, thank you for spending some of your Sunday with us uh, also. Happy to be here. Thanks. Um, we also have Deneen Lenoir, and Deneen runs the Good Shepherd Ministry Center. Um, Deneen uh, <clears throat> works with our friends at the Bethlehem Food Pantry. Uh, many of our parishioners know the Food Pantry well. They volunteer regularly. And uh, Deneen looks after all of the other ministries that happen out of that space. And one of the reasons we thought it would be helpful to have Deneen here uh, on this uh, round table was to kind of hear how that works, um, how they manage a variety of partners, how they choose partners, uh, those kinds of things. So Deneen, thank you so much for joining us. And um, we're going to learn a little bit more about what surrounds the food pantry. Um, lastly, uh, but certainly not least, uh, Raul Palomino is the director of New Day Urban Ministries. They have been a partner of FHPC for a bunch of years, and uh, their location closer to downtown San Diego puts them in a convenient place to do outreach and to serve the needs of the population that lives closer into the city. Um, they do an awful lot of work with people who are experiencing homelessness. Uh, and they also do some unique work with people who are recently released from prison um, and have a really, really hard time getting the documentation that they need to actually reintegrate into society. Um, and that is one of the things that New Day has been doing for quite a while. Um, and they're a little bit unique in that. Uh, so Raul, welcome again. Thank you for being here. Uh, well, thank you for inviting us. Thank you. All right, well, let's, uh, let's continue. And um, to, let's see, I see Denise and I see Adele. So welcome to the FHPC parishioners who dialed in to uh, listen live. What I would like to offer to you, if you've got a question that pops up, um, 
can you just put it in the chat box and I will monitor that and I will try to be um, straight away, get the question in front of whoever that question needs to be <laughs> directed to. Um, but we have a, uh, about five questions that we're going to talk about around the table. So the first question, let me uh, attempt to um, go forward in my, there we go. So the first question that we'd like the panelists to discuss, and, and this question is going to Robin uh, at the preschool first, and then everyone else, please feel free to jump in and from your own perspective, which is going to be very different than Robin's, uh, also um, help us to see what has gone on. And the question is, in your specific ministry, what is one key learning point that you and your organization have taken away from almost two years worth of pandemic? Um, we're all kind of tired <laughs> and uh, it's been a very, very difficult time. So Robin, would you like to take that question away and get us rolling? I will. Um, and I feel like I could personally just speak probably for two full days answering, trying to answer this question um, because it's hard to kind of summarize how things have shifted for me as a leader and for our school as a whole um, organization. What I will kind of hone in on um, is that nothing surprises me anymore. Nothing surprises me in my line of work. Um, nothing surprises me in terms of rules changing or expectations put on our school um, by, the, by the county, by the state. Um, teachers' needs don't surprise me anymore. Um, it used to be a pretty clear cut. You come to work, you get your job done, you implement your lesson plan, you take care of the children, our job is done and you sign out and it's not that way anymore. Um, I would say um, it, it, the flexibility that is required of, of me um, and, our, and our, our entire staff really to maintain our operational status as a nonprofit preschool, early childhood education program in the county right now, um, it has never required more patience and, and flexibility um, I used to pride myself on being a very organized, very uh, type A person and leader, and you cannot do those things in, in pandemic leadership. Um, so I really wake up each day and ask myself, what can I do today to ensure that our organization will have, our school will have a safe, a fun, and a healthy day? And each and every day, that's very, very different. Um, and some days are easier than others, but I, I think I'm gonna hone in on um, the, the flexibility and, and the need to take care of the teachers daily. Their, their needs change daily too, um, and to really meet those needs. Wow. Thank you, Robin. Um, I suspect that might be something that others are experiencing maybe with a different twist. Who'd like to jump in? Please do. Well, maybe I, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, so okay. one of the things that we've learned since 2020 was that um, we needed to be faster and, and, and better uh, decision makers when it came to uh, repurposing things, uh, changing things, Thanks. making sure that those things that we were doing were going to be effective, effect, affecting, knowing that they were going to be affecting uh, our clients. So um, I will go more to the specific of really being able and willing to be changed and be moved towards uh, the needs of the people uh, more than uh, the uh, procedures or the way that we've been doing it for the last 53 years. Um, it was more, you know, knowing that people were in need, knowing that people uh, needed things done uh, right away. Um, and one good example is that uh, we do provide uh, about 60 different services, uh, but the ones that you referred to them were uh, those that we assist the uh, early release inmates coming out of prison to our community as home homeless individuals, and many of them without uh, any documentation to uh, get any type of benefits. Uh, we've never done the uh, um, uh, services out of our compound, out of our uh, ministry on market. Uh, and then lately I've been visiting 
uh, for the last year and a half, uh, Core Civic and other uh, organizations that do health bay house to do mm -hmm. uh, notarized uh, services to their clients. And so being able and be willing to change, uh, I think that really um, it's something that we are learning. Uh, and, and, and as we move on to this pandemic time, uh, I think that's making us to be more efficient. Um, I know that uh, you know many times the circumstances of our clients, those who are homeless, those who are not only coming out of prison, but also those who've been now unemployed and uh, with this uncertainty of what's next uh, with this new Omicron, uh, you know, and, and things not, not clear in the horizon. Uh, you know, it's uh, what, what am I gonna do and how, how am I gonna do it? And then, so uh, that will be, you know, to continue to be, I think, uh, a way of thinking. Um, let's tailor things out of the box to the circumstances so we can help our clients more effectively. Great, thank you, Raul. You're welcome. Who's up next? I'll go. Um, we were able to continue to do our uh, Saturday distribution. We had to modify, of course, to be uh, more uh, safe conscious with masks and pre-bagging food. But um, what I really took from it is that people still need connection mm -hmm. and that not only was it a gift to our neighborhood that we were able to still distribute, but a gift to, uh, for a place for people to volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, we reached out, we partnered with Still Canyon High School for student volunteers because they have a requirement for graduation. But during the pandemic, the kids didn't come by themselves. They brought their parents. It was a whole family affair where entire families were coming to volunteer, where normally they would just drop their students off. So I think um, having you know, something to do during the pandemic was really important for, for volunteers um, as well. Um, and one regret is that um, for me working in the evening hours, um, and having kind of regulars that came by to check in with me, um, not having their direct contacts. So as soon as we had a shutdown, there really wasn't a way to, you know, kind of check in on people that we were used to seeing on a regular basis. So um, that uh, once we open, you know, open back up more during the week and can have people just walk in and out, it'll be nice to start reconnecting and do a better job at knowing how to get a hold of people. Um, in instances like that. Hmm. All right, thanks, Deneen. Cassia? Yeah, and I'll go ahead and jump in. I think I can echo all of this in terms of, especially right at the beginning there, being very flexible and being able to change our plans. We normally had all our kids, um, we have 100 kids in Bellevue that come every day to get food um, from Children of the Nations, and they rely on that. And so figuring out how are we gonna get food to these kids and also how we're gonna make sure that the kids are getting the food that it's not getting resold. Um, and so our staff had to be very flexible in that way. But I think um, in terms of a key learning over the last two years, one of the biggest things for us was, um, you know, COVID didn't hit maybe as hard in Haiti as it has in the US. The case count is actually still very low. Of course, it's probably undercounted because there isn't availability for testing, but, um, over the last two years, just seeing that there's these huge secondary effects. And as we've seen in the US, and I've, I'm sure all of you have experienced as well, those secondary effects um, hurt the most vulnerable the most. So um, for example, in the US, we see 7% inflation, right? And so the poorest people are most challenged to be able to, to get their meals every day and their food and their basic needs met. In Haiti, we're seeing 30% inflation. So if you can imagine living on the edge of poverty already, barely being able to feed your family and then being hit with um, that amount of an increase in just food and gas prices. Mm. Um, and that, you know, it's, it's been slow and unfolded over the last two years where things just keep on guess getting worse and worse. And we're seeing, um, yeah, just that, that there's so much more to this than just the disease aspect of it, which again, I'm sure you've all experienced as well. And then just how much more that affects the most vulnerable communities you know, in our world and also in our country. Um, so that's been 
responding to that and making sure we're continuing to provide, you know, malnutrition has doubled in Haiti over the last two years. So being able to continue to provide for the most urgent needs um, has been a challenge. Well, we think our 7% inflation is rough. I just cannot imagine how someone in Haiti can survive. My goodness, wow. Okay, um, let's go to our next question. Thank you all. And this next question is going to go to New Day um, to answer first, and then of course everyone else can jump in. So Raul, does the experience of the last two years point your organization in any new or reignited directions? Um, I heard you mention that uh, efficiency was something you learned um, and also uh, providing the services in conjunction perhaps with where people are living. So would you like to expand on that a little bit? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, well, you know, for many, many years, uh, we uh, had been the resource of many organizations around the county. Uh, we are members of the San Diego County Continuum of Care. So uh, we get uh, clients from uh, all the downtown organizations, as well as the East County organizations to get uh, either bus passes, tools for work, uh, birth certificates, IDs, uh, for anyone who needs it for any type of social service. Uh, so uh, it's been more kind of the service done and then we don't know what happened after that point. And so what we're doing now, we're actually doing a follow-up of each client with uh, their uh, caseworkers, either at PAT or uh, at uh, the San Diego Rescue Mission or the um, uh, the Salvation Army uh, and, and others uh, that actually are getting our services. Uh, and then we're trying to track down more into the success rate. Uh, and, you know, of those clients that are now being helped, uh, not only in our location, but now as we're going to the Halfway House uh, in uh, Core Civic uh, in the southeast part of San Diego. And now we're doing the notary service and the paperwork in their location uh, to be more with the client in their uh, area of comfort per se, and uh, just to be a bit more, uh, I will say, uh, effective onto that. Uh, and I know uh, success is measured in many different ways. Uh, so we've been seeing now clients coming back, uh, willing to not only donate uh, their time and talents, but now also they're giving back to us uh, people that uh, now they are have they have not only a, a job but now they have housing and they're not homeless anymore, mm -hmm. and they're coming back to us. So for me, that's kind of one of the things that I've learned that uh, you know has reignited uh, our volunteer base who has come down to half of whatever we had before. Uh, we used to have about forty-five to fifty volunteers. Uh, there were our case workers, were the people behind the whole operation to close to twenty-five now. And, uh, but then we continue to uh, move on towards this different uh, uh, ways of doing uh, ministry and going out of the four walls of New Day uh, on market uh, to just almost anywhere around the San Diego County. And then the last thing is uh, we've been uh, also trying to uh, get uh, organized in the house in, in our compound uh, on market with things that we never had. Uh, this year, uh, we're building a shower and a dressing room in our basement for those seeking employment. We've been helping people with uh, uniforms and uh, bus passes uh, and uh, clean clothes, but then we have clients that live in their cars or they uh, are totally homeless and then they're basically not even at a shelter, but living out on the streets, but they're looking for employment and then they go to apply for employment, but they haven't paid in, in weeks. So uh, our goal is to have that shower ready by the end, before the end, but the middle of the year, I guess our bigger, biggest problem right now is permits. And of course the contractors that have started already working. Uh, we started already since December, we've been, we've been blessed. Uh, we got the resources to do it. Uh, we have the, a team of uh, people from different churches working towards that construction. So we're moving forward. We're not staying on what we always do and so we're trying to move on to the direction that God is 
already pointing us to do and then to walk through those uh, uh, different uh, ministry areas that I know people will be blessed as we are blessed by them. Great. Thanks, Raul. Uh, We'd like to jump in next. I'll jump in. Um, for the preschool, I would say uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, so we shut down March 13th, 2020. I'll never forget that day. And the goal um, from that day forward was how do we reopen safely? And so our partnership with um, the church included asking for cleaning supplies to have adequate supplies on hand so that we could reopen our school and meet all those requirements that were um, put forth in order to be an uh, open and active childcare facility during the pandemic. I think it's shifting not, I mean, clearly we did reopen and, and right now it's gonna be how do we stay open? And staying open means uh, having enough staff on hand um, when illness strikes and you can't control that. Um, it's also teacher retention. Um, I, and I, I'm sure every, every organization that's on this call today can, can you know, have a similar story to tell. I could lose my teachers at any moment. Um, they could go anywhere and have a less stressful job and be less exposed to illness on a daily basis. And how do I take care of the people that God has brought to us and, and that has worked with us through this pandemic, this whole time, how do we keep our teachers? Because teachers that are loved and cared for will be able to love and care for the children that are in our care. Um, so I've got the day-to-day -day operations of the school. It's, it's how do we take care of these teachers that have worked so hard um, and so tirelessly mm -hmm. through this pandemic, through the shutdown, through the reopening, and now this this really middle murky ground of where are we now? What do we do now? You know. Wow. Thanks, Robin. I can jump in. Um, talking about the last two years in Haiti, I do have to mention that there's been some other major events in the country. So in July of this year, their president was assassinated. Mm -hmm. um, and they've essentially had a non-functioning government and largely um, just a huge gang influence. And I, if you do follow Haiti in the news, you might've read about a lot of kidnappings um, and general insecurity. And then in August of 2021, there was a 7.2 earthquake that hit the south, southern region of Haiti. So Haiti has been through the ringer in so many ways in this last year. Actually, our the chairman of our board of directors in Haiti, who lived through the you know the huge earthquake in Port-au-Prince 10 years ago or 11 years ago, said that this is the hardest year he's ever he's ever lived through in his country. So it's so much more than just COVID when we think about the last two years in Haiti. Um, and I think. I, you probably heard this already in my first thing, but just that the need is bigger than it ever has been before. And we have um, always wanted to expand our ministry in Haiti to take in more kids. And uh, we're just brought to this point where we see the urgency so much. Our board of directors is actually, we were able to, thanks to a lot of gifts after the earthquake, um, we were able to take the resources that we had and send a small team of Haitian staff down to the south of Haiti and they provided relief supplies for the people down there, not only were they in desperate need of relief, but it was very difficult for a lot of, it was almost impossible for international organizations to get in um, because of the gang violence and because of travel restrictions. And then it was very difficult for organizations even within Haiti to, to get past the roads down to the south. Um, but our organization was able to do that and able to distribute emergency supplies to people down in, in the southern region. And our board of directors is praying about doing initial, initial work of feasibility, whether we could start a program down in that southern region because of the devastation that's there. So just their eyes have been open to, to the greater need around them. Um, so that's kind of a, a huge one for us. Um, but, but yeah, definitely driven by the need that we see around us. Thank you, Cassia. Yeah, and for us, um, we have a lot, we've had the time over the last couple of years to you know, collect donations. People were extra generous during COVID 
and to kind of queue up projects. And now we're just waiting for it to be safe and to be able to get people together to execute those projects. And so, um, you know, looking at things like putting in a community garden, um, doing a kitchen where we can show people how to make meals with the food that we um, give out on a weekly basis. Um, we have a, a, a small apartment in the building that we, you know, are, could be repurposing towards like a medical clinic. Um, so we, we have a lot of space in our building and trying to, you know, wait for the, it's very difficult to wait for the time when you can have a bunch of people in your building. <laughs> so it's kind of like a nanny, nanny, nanny situation. Like it's here, but you can't use it yet. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, uh, I think that's, there's just a lot of pent-up excitement. So we're excited to release when we are able to. Yeah. Thanks, Denine. Uh, you know, the way you put it, Denine, um, you've been thinking about where do we go? What should we, what projects do we need? What does the community need? Um, I'm hearing response to those things from all of you and taking this time as perhaps a gift um, to be able to say, all right, let's step back, let's look, let's figure out where we go, where, uh, what's needed, I love that. And you know, as, as a partner, it really helps us because you guys are so much, so much closer um, to the people you, that we serve together um, and to know that you are already looking back direction, whether it's, you know, moving to another part of Haiti to expand a ministry or um, adding it, that's, that's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Thank you guys. So the next question is, um, I'll just throw it open to all of you um, after I pose it. Um, you know, you all have been our partners uh, for a while, at least more than six months. Um, and most of it before pandemic times. When you look for a partner, um, whether it's us or somebody else, what do you look for? I mean, what makes a good partner um, as you know, an organization that wants to partner with organizations that are already doing work in our communities? Um, we'd like to know as FHPC, um, what, what do you look for? What's going to help you the most um, in who we are um, and any other partner you might want to recruit? So um, I'll throw that open to anybody who'd like to start that conversation. <laughs> well, well, I'll answer and just say what I've really appreciated about Fletcher Hills um, partnership. And one thing that I just really, I really value about you guys is that um, I don't feel like you come into it with your own agenda as like, we want to do A, B, and C in Haiti, but, but sort of this humble attitude of what are your greatest needs and how can we come alongside you to, to meet those? Um, yeah. And, and then, um, you know, the, the, the gifts and the financial support is one thing, but we also do really deeply value prayer support. And you guys have been amazing at being faithful in that and even finding creative ways to do that. I think you like distributed pictures of our kids so that each you know member of your congregation could, could pray over specific children, you know, things that are, um, I think, you know, having done ministry in Haiti, it's, it's such a, it's a spiritual battle working there and having partners that stand behind us both in terms of support, but also in prayer is, um, is so meaningful to me and to our partners in Haiti, to, to our staff in Haiti. So. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'll jump in on, on, on this. And um, I, I think one of the things that I look for more when I'm partnering, partnering with some uh, organization is the fact that uh, we're actually pursuing the same goal. And uh, so my goal really is to end up homeless. Uh, this, this homeless uh, time that everybody has gone through in, in one way or another, uh, to make it easier, to make it a season and, and I tell people and, and in the future to be kind of out of business, uh, not because we will we'll cease to exist, 
but that we can share the knowledge, the wisdom, and the experiences that we all have uh, with other partners so that they can be effective in their communities and in the areas where they can impact their community better. Uh, and then, of course, that we can partner where uh, we can say we have uh, the uh, resources that we have accumulated for 53 years, uh, not only uh, on the tangible things, but on people, you know, people that, uh, I, I mean, one of the things that I, I love and I continue to miss all my volunteers from Fletcher Hills at uh, New Day, um, as I know that uh, they, they are and they will be always in my heart, my prayers. I see Gene Nelson there somewhere uh, already uh, <laughs> listening. And uh, for me, it's, it's just that, I think, uh, the greatest asset that we can have as organization and as human beings is each other. And as we uh, hear right now from uh, Cassia, you know, just to be able to pray for our needs, to pray for each other, to support each other in, in prayer, it goes a long, long way uh, because that opens up the blessings that God has already in place for us through different venues. But at the end, you know, it's having the same goal. I think that's what I look for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Raul. You're welcome. Yeah, from our perspective, I think um, the first one is alignment of values, that we are trying to, to achieve the same goal, or we want to serve people with uh, humility and to lift other people up in the community, um, and consistency. So what's been really appreciated is that consistent volunteer support, um, that it's not kind of... Uh, a new thing that you're look, always looking for a new thing, <laughs> you know, where you're like here for a short time and then gone, you know, yeah. you guys have been really, really consistent and continuing to support the ministry center. Um, I think that is something that we really look forward is for partners that, you know, are in for the long term. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think for the preschool, um, I don't know that we so much seek out the partnerships as uh, when when folks come looking to support, looking to care, looking to um, pray for us and be with us. Um, I want to make sure that our doors are always open to that. And so finding ways to say, yeah, we do need help over here, you know, um, and, you know, where there are certain licensing rules that are put forth and certain people can't be in classrooms all the time. And so it's really finding ways. And when there was nothing else to do, I said, I need Clorox wipes. And man, did you guys provide, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, it, and it was enough to show the county when we reopened that we had all the supplies needed. And so what seemed like no big deal, yeah, I'll go get Clorox wipes. I mean, that was a life-changing experience mm -hmm. for us. So making sure that when partners come to, to the school and say, how can we help? that I'm, I'm open to that and that our school is always um, keeping our hands open and our hearts open to that kind of partnership um, and care because it really does take a village and nobody can do any of this on our own. Um, so. Yeah, I think Robin, you're in a little different situation than some of these partners of ours because you don't really get to write all the rules uh, that you have to, operate under and, and we, don't, we don't have a feel for those rules either. Um, so yeah, I guess sometimes we trip over ourselves occasionally, <laughs> but, we, but we love it when you say, yes, this is what I need. <laughs> I, I thought I knew the rules up until last Monday when they all changed again, but I'm just kidding. I joke. <laughs> well, they'll change by the next Monday too, right? <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. All right. So following on on the partnership conversation, um, if you were to look long term, um, you know, are there ways, are there are suggestions that you have ways that we can deepen the relationship? The presumption here is that the relationship is good for us and for our partners. Um, and how can we do that better? Um, whether that's deeper, broader, whatever you might think of. Um, We'd like to hear some of that because we're in a planning stage. We're in a visioning sort of space of our own. Um, 
where we're kind of thinking, you know, what do we look like after this couple of years that's been so, so weird? Um, so we'd love to hear from, from our partners, you know, if you look at it long term, how do you see the relationship changing or growing? Yeah, so um, one thing that um, will be really helpful for us is to advocate for this site. So um, as you know, we are looking to expand and host safe parking and to, to really understand, you know, who we want to help with the safe parking, those families and older people that are living in their cars. Um, that's really our target population. And if you hear negativity about, oh, you know, we'll have shopping carts lined up around the block. Um, that's not really, we're not looking to host a homeless shelter here but a safe parking program and to understand that and advocate for us, um, for, for the truth, essentially, <laughs> um, and try to educate people as you run across them in the community. Um, and then also, um, like I mentioned earlier, we're looking to expand as COVID decreases or more people are vaccinated. And we welcome leadership and people that want to be leaders so, um, in, you know, anything that you think we can do better, um, please, you know, voice that with us. Um, if you're looking for a space to start your own ministry, I um, mean, you, you like the synergy down here, um, we're always looking for other, um, other uh, opportunities and other ways we can serve the community. So um, as much as anybody wants to lead an effort down here, we're, we're always open to hear, hear suggestions as well. And then um, we have uh, you know, study space and tutoring space as well. So you know, if anybody has a need to want to tutor folks down here, we can always coordinate that use of space in the afternoons. Um, so I think that's, that's what I can think of for that. I heard you, Deneen, I heard you say that um, you were considering taking some of your space and perhaps uh, doing a medical office or a dental office, something with that space. Um, is this, just to make sure I understood, would that be an example if we had a dentist in our congregation or somebody that we knew who was interested in providing some services, make that connection? Is that kind of what you're thinking? Sure. So if you, yeah. So as we... Um, communicate out and maybe we can do a better job of letting people know how we want to grow mm -hmm. and then if you have um organizations that you're aware of that you can put in touch with us um, that's always helpful um, the more you share the, the more information we give and the more people that that's shared with mm -hmm. the more it helps us make those connections um, so much uh I uh, am pretty active on the homeless task force mm -hmm. and we get a lot of exposure that way. And we hear, you know, how we can help people because we can't do a lot of services here um, or there's already services in other areas. So we don't want to just duplicate everything in the county. We want to supplement and fill in holes. Mm -hmm. um, so as much as we know what's going on in the, or in the, in the El Cajon, it's helpful for us to connect people that call us looking for services that we may not provide, but we know other people that provide that mm. as well. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Who's next? Well, I was gonna say for Haiti, you know, one of what I would love to say is come to Haiti. <laughs> and I think what we value and love about that is that when, um, when your congregation gets to go in country, you know, they can, become advocates for our ministry and have a passion for what we're doing and understand it and see it firsthand. It's hard to be so far away and, and have a deep understanding of the impact that you're making, um, which you probably don't even realize how much of an impact you're making, you know, if you're, if you're just seeing pictures, you're not seeing the work on the ground, um, but not COVID, gang violence, um, political insecurity, I, I cannot even say when we'll be able to take a team to Haiti again, but we are trying to be creative in ways to connect people more. Um, this quarter, we're going to try to have our country director actually from Haiti do a Zoom thing like this, and I'll, I'll give you all the details for that. Yeah, we're just, we're um, just in brainstorming phases. Um, 
And, uh, and another way is just, I, we really value and your church already does this is a lot of individual sponsor kids. Um, and that kind of provides a personal connection, you know, between, between individuals and allows people to go deeper in terms of praying for investing in writing to knowing one kid, um, in our program. So, yeah. Great. Thanks, Cassia. I think um, if I can jump in, I, so we're really unique being the preschool at the church campus. I, I know you guys, you're my people. And um, for me, what I, what has meant the most is when my teachers recognize you as their people and recognizing the faces that have come alongside and cared for them and prayed for them and prayed for their classrooms and their students and the health and provided um, the needs when we when we we needed help you know and so the the recognition of of the partnership that is already on campus all day every day um, I'm going to give an example and this may be a, a really silly example but we have Lori and Scott who take care of our garden out front and my goodness the teachers by those two classrooms right there just the little chit chat that happens and they they recognize recognize each other's faces. Um, that to me is a partnership. That mm -hmm. is family. And um, so I, I, I somehow, I don't know how, you know, to, you guys aren't just my people that, that the teachers also recognize you guys. Um, and I love seeing more and more of that. Cool. Well, um, if I can uh, jump in. Um... I think one of the things that always, always have been uh, in my mind is the uh, closeness that we always be in uh, because we're the ministry of the San Diego Presbytery. And uh, because of that, I know that it's always been uh, a close relationship, but I really uh, think that uh, we wanna know more about the needs of the church of the community around the church uh, and how the resources and, and, and probably uh, the volunteers that uh, we uh, share, because there's many of uh, the Fletcher Hill um, uh, congregants that have volunteered with me, and they still are volunteering in many different ways. Uh, I can re remember to Adele, Adele right now, she's volunteering with me and Jean Nelson and others, uh, Jeff and Greta uh, Bloom, um, just to mention some names, but uh, how can we probably, my dream one day is to have a, um, uh, I will say kind of a, an office of uh, the ministry at every church that could be uh, trained and, 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 and care by not only the ministry that I represent, but by the 31 churches that we represent as a presbytery. And if we can do that and bring those resources to those areas in need, I think that will strengthen our relationships that will strengthen not only uh, the one-way blessing, but it will be a two-way blessing where those blessings can actually be also being seen at your home area, your um, uh, ethos and uh, El Cajon and, and even La Mesa. Uh, and uh, so uh, I'm, I'm starting to continue to visit other churches through Zoom as we're doing it right now. And uh, right now we're working with the Southeast Presbyterian Church that uh, it's in deep need, and uh, so we can help them with the resources and, and visitations and help in the community with the resources of New Day, even though we're in, in the downtown area, but I'm all, all open for that, and as I'm here right now, and I hear about you uh, uh, and, and, and the things that you're doing with the community with these beautiful partners, you know, uh, but when I hear uh, Deneen, you know, on the things that she's looking for, um, I can just tell you, all of you guys, that we are open for each and every one of you. Uh, and uh, I know we might not go to Haiti, but we have a lot of Haitian clients that do come for diapers, for uh, formula, for clothing on a daily basis. Uh, and we try to love them and care for them as much as we can. Uh, and I know that many of them, believe it or not, they drive all the way from El Cajon and uh, uh, La Mesa just to get resources to downtown, from downtown. So if we could uh, spread these blessings to other mm -hmm. venues and other places, I think that we can do it. I think we can uh, just uh, plan ahead and say, okay, let's 
set a goal of maybe this year to do an event at Fletcher Hills Presbyterian Church where we can bring some of the resources so we can get to know each other more uh, in person, not just with the church, but with the partners of uh, Fletcher Hills and see how we can complement each other. Uh, as I heard, you know, uh, from others, you know, not uh, stepping into any, anybody's feet, but also just complimenting and helping on the best, uh, uh, probably uh, ways that we can help the community. I would love to great. have that. That would be great. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Raul. And thanks to each of you. There are some really interesting ideas here. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh. Well, last, uh, last opportunity here for some closing thoughts. And again, if any of our parishioners who are uh, on the call have questions that you'd like to ask um, to our partners, you are welcome to do that. Um, please put them in the chat box uh, because there are probably more of us than, uh, than I can see somebody raise your hand. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, closing thoughts from our partners while folks are thinking if they've got a question, who'd like to take that on first? I think I was supposed to, so. All right then, go for it. I have, I have my little assistant here with me. She woke up from her nap early, so. <laughs> I <laughs> heard her voice just a moment ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I just, just to kind of um, close the loop, honestly, I think that as I reflect on the last two years of the pandemic, we see that it's, it has affected disproportionately the most vulnerable, both in our country, but also globally. Mm -hmm. um, and just remembering, you know, 7% inflation here, 30% inflation in Haiti. Um, Uganda, we also work in Uganda. Um, they just opened up their schools after 82 weeks of being closed. And they're estimating that a third of their students will not ever come back to school. Um, so, if you just think about the impact that, that you know, when you're already living on the edge um, and something like this happens, there's just so much less margin and these countries don't have safety nets either. Um, and so it's so much more needed and so much more appreciated in this time. And I, I appreciate Fletcher Hills and just your commitment to the most vulnerable, you know, through all these ministries represented here. Um, and that, yeah, if there's ever a time to give more generously than you ever have before, it's now because there's never been greater need. Um, there's never been greater disparity between the rich and the poor in our world. Um, and it probably will only get worse. So I don't know, that, that's not a very happy closing thought, but hopefully it's compelling. Um, Reality. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who'd like to go next from our partners? Yeah, I, I would like to uh, close it with uh, this, this really a, um, uh, a word of thank you. Uh, a word of thank you for uh, putting this together uh, for thinking of us uh, the way you do, uh, a representative church, the, you know, all the congregants from Fletcher Hills, uh, Bridget. And I think uh, as I hold it down with one thought is to know that uh, even though we have gone through uh, hard times during this last two years, uh, God has always been uh, there to uh, provide not only the things, resources and, and the help that we have, we're able to be uh, here, you know, talking on Zoom, and just to to be thankful for that and to care for each other. Uh, so my thoughts are for you guys and the goals and uh, the uh, objectives that you guys have for 2022 to be uh, those goals and objectives that God will provide. And as we are here together, that we could pray for each other's uh, needs and as well as to know that we are only a phone call away. We're only an email away. We're only a meeting away on Zoom that uh, we can reconnect and, and not to lose. I've been in so many meetings that uh, I meet on, uh, like I, I heard before from the county's continuum of care from the, uh, uh, the, the, the hub of all these nonprofits that uh, we lose contact unless we need them. And I think a lot of times we just need to, to contact ourselves to say, uh, you know, uh, I need prayer, or I need, I need, uh, oh, I need uh, something from you anyway. But uh, just uh, thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you, Raul. Yeah, so I'd like to say that um, 
In the Grossmont Union School District and El Cajon Valley School District, there are 552 families that don't have a place of their own to call home. A lot of these families are living with friends and relatives, um, but they don't have a permanent place of their own. 194 of those families are living in motels, shelters, or out of their cars. And so regardless of whether or not we get to actually host a safe parking program, we definitely wanna look into how to plug in with those families. Um, and as we have more shelters and places for um, folks to stay, we're hoping that we can, continue, we can host more events here as far as you know, showers, um, meals, tutoring. Um, we had started doing that pre-pandemic and so we're hoping to expand that post-pandemic. And we'll keep everybody in the loop because um, it'll take a lot of people and a lot of support to support those families. Yeah, that's a huge number, Denise. Yeah, it's true. It's straight from the school district. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I believe you. It's just an enormous, I don't think I had any sense that that number would be that big. Yeah, and they consider like if you're living with your aunt, let's say you and your kids are living with your aunt, they consider you homeless because you could be ousted at any time. You don't have a lease uh -huh. in your name. So that's the definition of homeless in the school districts. But I think even 194 families in motels or shelters is a pretty pretty big number. Yeah. And that's only people that have self-disclosed. You know, not everybody comes forward and um, identifies their situation. Yeah, wow. So. Okay, Robin? Last thoughts? Yeah, I want to, you know, echo the thanks um, and gratitude um, for being a partner of the church. Um, it would have been so easy, especially these last two years, for you guys to say our resources are also halted. And, um, you know, you, the church has needs of their own right now. And yet you guys just jumped right in. And before I could even tell you what we needed, you were ready. Um, and so I really want to thank um, you, Bridget, and, and the team of folks and the committees and all the volunteers um, just for the heart that you guys have for the community. Because clearly, looking at the mission partners and looking at our faces right now, you've, you've taken care of so many. Um, so thank you to the church. Um, and just as a word of encouragement to the mission partners, you guys, it's day to day. It's so hard. And I, I hear what you do in the country, out of the country, in the county, out of the county, all those things. And waking up in the middle of the night, I can't be the only one that wakes up in the middle of the night worrying about what are we gonna do tomorrow, you know, and the need that we're gonna face tomorrow. So hang in there, guys. Oh, love that advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, well, I'm gonna quit sharing my screen and I'm gonna bring everybody back so I can see you all. And now I can see if you raise your hand and if you've got a, a final question, I see Jean, I see Denise, Adele, Lynn. Do you have a question for any of our partners before we close out? And I think we'll close out with a quick word of prayer. Nancy, anybody question for these guys? I'm not seeing a raised hand. Okay, well then. Let's close in prayer, if that's okay with all of you, and I will pray for us, and then you can get off to the rest of your Sunday. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the way you have designed us as humans, that we need each other. We need partners. We need people who think differently than we do. We need people who are willing to work together. And, and we are so grateful for the partnerships that we have. We thank you for the blessings that you have poured into each partner as an organization, as a group of volunteers. And we thank you for the blessings you've poured into FHPC so, so that we are in a place where we can allow those blessings to overflow. And we ask Lord, it may be crazy, but we would like those blessings to continue to be able to overflow into our partners. Mm. Thank you for being with each and every one of us and for giving us this time on a Sunday afternoon. Be with us during the week. Keep everyone safe and as healthy as possible. 
Thank you, Lord God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Have a great rest of your weekend. And thank you for spending time with us. It's been wonderful. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Pleasure always. Bye, everybody. God bless. Bye.